Yeah. How are you? Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> How are you? Good day. Nice meeting. It's a pleasure meeting you. Danielle, so great to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet you too. And uh, it's an honor to meet your mom, Lucille, as well. Thank you so much. So, uh, as I understand it, in addition to all that you have going on and caring for other uh, children as part of your childcare business, you're also taking care of your mom full time. Is that yes. right? Yes. Um, she had a stroke in September 2019. And um, she's been here with me full time since then. Wow. And how's, can you tell me about that experience? I wasn't prepared. Yeah. And I, I don't think anyone would be prepared to see your mom who's, you know, vital and independent and um, doing her own thing, have her own life. See her diminish to that capacity where she can't do things for herself. It's hard because I lean on her a lot for my strength and yeah. now I have to be her strength. It's been a very interesting uh, part of, the, of sort of the arc of the journey of life for me as well. <laughs> like to see, you know, your parents right. who brought you this far through life and have really been, you know, the rock and the foundation for us start to slow down. Uh, or, you know, in, in the case of Lucille, confront some real challenges. How, how have you made the adjustment? It was hard at first because, you know, she wanted to go back home. She has her own house. She has her own circle of friends. It was also acceptance and having some hard conversations. 2020 was going to be my big year. She needed care, but, you know, I kept saying, well, the school's going to do well and we're going to make bag. So I would be in a a uh, better financial position. Then COVID happened. So it was trying to figure out how I'm gonna take care of this, this whole human and take care of this business. And I was trying to do online dating and the guy was like, well, where do I fit in? And I'm like, you don't. Yeah. You really don't. Cause it's my mom. It's my school and then it's me. So you got to be able to ride with that. And if you can't ride with that, then I'm sorry. <laughs> Better get in where you fit in. Right. Um, my view has been a once in a century pandemic requires a once in a century comprehensive, compassionate and continuing response, mm -hmm. you know, to get you back to a better place. And as the president has said, to build back better in, in that regard, tell me how the school is doing now so the plan has always been to have a full-time program and the school was ready and we were actually in the process of getting licensed and then everything shut down i've applied for for grants never got any grant my mom always says you know you're going to be somebody and you know you got to work towards it and and that's what i did and now i feel like i've done everything i've done what was expected and I don't feel like it's enough. That's such an important point, because <laughs> when you work hard and you play by the rules and you do the right thing by your country, the basic contract in America has been, your country is gonna do the right thing by you. I think there are folks all across the country who feel like that basic contract for different reasons has been broken. One of the things that we're working on in Washington, you know, is President Biden's American Jobs Plan, and it has a few different components. There's the investment in physical infrastructure, and then there's human infrastructure, the caring economy, long-term care, home care, child care, caring for um, our parents, older Americans. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me your thoughts on why the second part, you know, the caring economy, uh, is important for us to invest in caring for my mom who did have a vital life it would be it would be a lifesaver we use a lot of her savings for like her therapy taking her to the doctor you know to be put in a position where she's draining her life savings mm -hmm. her retirement savings and you possibly have to 
um, you know, utilize some of your savings because of this unexpected adversity. Your story and your journey is a classic example of why we need to do that. All of these folks, depending on you, who can you depend on? But lately I've just been depending on myself, but I wish we had other people who can really listen to our voices and um, take the time to consider what we are going through. Because we're not looking for a handout. I'm just looking for an opportunity because I did this on my own and I just want to continue to do what I do best and do what I love. We want to make sure that we help you do what you do best uh, and do what you love because it's helpful to the community, the city, and the country. And I appreciate you giving me an opportunity to sit and listen <laughs> to what you've had to say. And it certainly will help inform um, the issues that I want to go back to Washington and work on on your behalf and on behalf of the people I'm privileged to serve. Thank you so much for taking the time to serve me. Thank you.